Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Clone Army Attacketh by Ian Dersha. So this is Star Wars Part the Second by William Shakespeare. Uh, Dersha basically writes Shakespearean style takes on the Star Wars movies. He's also done Much Ado About Mean Girls and uh, Get Thee Back to the Future. I'm going to read you the blurb of this, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs before I share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... To Shmi or not to Shmi. The curtain rises on Yeoman, Jedi, Anakin Skywalker, a man torn between duty to his masters, attraction to Padme, and concern for his beloved mother, Shmi. His choices will determine not just his own destiny, but that of the entire Republic, and thereby hangs a tale. Out, damned Fett! A noble lady in danger, a knight and squire in battle, and a forbidden love written in the stars. The quill of William Shakespeare meets the galaxy of George Lucas, complete with period illustrations, insightful soliloquies, and masterful meter that will convince you the bard himself penned this epic adventure. So, I'm going to start by reading you the uh, prologue here by the chorus. Uh, so, set in outer space, enter chorus. All hurly-burly goes the galaxy, the Senate sees a time of harsh unrest, for many thousand systems do decree, intent to leave the Republic's troubled nest. This movement of the Separatists is led by one Count Dooku, garbed in mystery. The Jedi Knights are pressed and thinly spread, the peace they keep grows weaker by degree. A vital vote the Senate doth pursue, shall they an army for the Republic make? Strong Senator Amdala of Naboo, to Coruscant makes way this plan to break. In time so long ago begins our play in clash-strewn galaxy far Far, far away. Got some great illustrations. There's one of them there. And here we have uh, Padme and Anakin meeting up again after a long time. And Anakin goes, Well, Padme says, It hath been years too many, Obi Wan. Time's march continues on as Quicksilver. And Annie, is it thee? How thou hast grown. Anakin says, and thou as well in charm and loveliness, I mean, but loveliness most politic, and charm that doth befit a senator. Twas nothing more, I meant, nay, nothing more. And Obi Wan goes, How like a child he stammers, nervous wretch. Uh, Yoda speaks only in haiku, and one of his lines he says, Once the impossible hath been eliminated, what remains is truth. And that's Yoda speaking in haiku, Shakespeare style, quoting Sherlock Holmes. And here's the classic bit of uh, Anakin hating the sand, he says, For me the sand hath never been a balm, on Tatooine we are encumbered by too much of its most coarse and unkind touch. It is an ever-present irritant, not like the peaceful sands of thy Naboo. Here all is soft like cheeks upon a babe, and smooth as sculpted alabaster too. Padme and Anakin speak in rhyming couplets as well, which I think is very cool. Anakin says the line, the course of true love never did run smooth, which I think is just a Shakespearean line. Could be wrong there. Uh, and C-3PO has a line where he goes, by my droidly troth, which is great because by my troth is a very common like Shakespeareism, meaning like, by my truth, I guess. But I like to buy my droidly troth. And then Obi-Wan gets a great little soliloquy after he's observed uh, Count Dooku uh, plotting against the Republic. So he goes, My ears do burn by treason's wicked flame. A band of traitorous conspirators doth seek to bring the Republic to its knees. And in the doing rout the Jedi too. Was there such villainy as this designed? Was there such treachery as this conceived? Was there such perfidy as this begun? Was there such wrongdoing as this devised? Conspiracy upon conspiracy doth grow such that I find myself amazed. Attempt on the Senator's dear life turned to a bounty hunter's keen pursuit. The bounty hunter led to cloner's art, news of an army ordered for the Republic. From there the bounty hunter led once more unto this scene of greatest menace yet. A plot to overthrow all we hold dear, including me and the Jedi Order too. With haste I must report this evil scheme may have to save us from a vile regime. And there's a great conversation between two Jedis here. I guess I'll be Jedi 1 when I step to my left and Jedi 2 when we're on the right. So we got... I like this because this breaks the fourth wall and kind of reflects upon... You'll see. I just think it's a really interesting take because you don't really see this and uh, like this definitely isn't part of the movies. This is very Shakespearean um, but it's very well done. I'm wondering o'er what the future brings. Indeed, what is it thou wonderest? Our stories and our strivings and our wars, shall they in other times remembered be? Is it possible that some long time from now, may happen galaxy far, far away, our tales shall be imparted to the young? Will there be anyone who doth recall wise master Yoda's striking witticisms, or noble master Windu's boundless might? What would some future far off galaxy think of our battles and adventures here? Shall our republic yet remembered be, when all empirically is past and gone? Oh, heavy thoughts, pray let me rest thy mind, for I have often wondered this myself. Yea, truly, what conclusions hast thou reached? 
but this. Why should another galaxy, well in the future, air have need of us? The future of another place shall be far different than we could ever think. Canst thou imagine folk in some far place, all gathered round to see our stories played? Their young men in our clothing all attired, their women as our princesses arrayed, their builders fashioning a scene to match, their artisans detailing starship parts, their scholars indexing each term of ours, their engineers attempting to make droids, their foolish jesters mashing up our words. Tis near unthinkable, some culture hence, that knows of our beloved sacred force. My friend, thy words are unexpected balm. Long time ahead in a galaxy far off, they shall have situations hard enough that they need not rehearse our troubled times. Thou seest, tis plain, unless our stories were some maudlin form of entertainment. Ha! How passing strange such galaxy would be. How passing strange it is indeed. I know the afterwards pretty interesting here as well, so um... He mentions he's borrowed a few devices, so Rumour, uh, which he borrowed from Shakespeare's Henry IV Part Two. Rumour's job is to build confusion and mistrust, which is perfect for this tale in which confusion and mistrust are the order of the day. He also uses the fates, uh, and he talks about the relationship between uh, Pad Padme and Anakin. Um, so they, basically they use an ABAB rhyming scheme and speak in rhyming quatrains. Um, but they also, there's a specific scene that includes lines spoken from uh, characters from each of Shakespeare's comedies and for good measure, Romeo and Juliet. So yeah, The Clone Army Attacketh, the William Shakespeare's Star Wars book by Ian Dersha. A lot of fun. You're going to like this in particular if you're a Star Wars fan or a Shakespeare fan. I am fortunately a bit of both, so I enjoyed this a lot. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5, but only because the clone, uh, the Attack of the Clones isn't necessarily my favourite Star Wars movie, so it was kind of struggling a bit with the source material. But overall, still pretty good, and uh, I am enjoying working through these. I don't have many left. 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of William Shakespeare's The Clone Army Attacketh by Ian Dersha. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought about this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.